As Carl Sagan once famously said, we are made of star stuff. And he's completely correct, but what did he mean by that? In fact, we're all made of particular types of star stuff. When you look at us, and plants and animals and bacteria and any living thing, we're made mainly of four elements. There's carbon, oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen, often known as the Chon or the Honk elements. And what makes up most of us are those four elements. So even the fundamental stuff that makes us up, so things like sugar, which we eat for energy, and also amino acids, which come together and make proteins, what makes up most of those is these same four fundamental elements. So something like the sun in about five billion years is going to start making a fair amount of carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. And pretty much every star in the universe is going to do this. Quite a lot have already done it, and so a lot of stars have then, at the end of their lives, thrown out this carbon, oxygen and nitrogen into, into stellar space. It then comes together at some point after this and makes new stars and also makes planets. So the carbon, hydrogen and oxygen that we're made of has all been made inside of these stars. Most stars are like the Sun, and all they're ever going to make is things like carbon, oxygen and nitrogen. It does mean that after hydrogen and helium, carbon, oxygen and nitrogen are the most common things in the universe. But we're also made of other stuff. There's things like magnesium and iron and calcium in our bones. Where those all come from is much bigger stars than the Sun. Any star that's bigger than about eight times the size of the Sun is going to carry on burning. It's not going to stop at carbon, oxygen and nitrogen. In fact, what stars like that are able to do is produce what are called alpha elements. So in the way we make carbon by adding three heliums together, we can make oxygen by adding another helium to it, we can carry on doing that. And the easiest thing for stars to do is keep adding heliums to things. So we can build up from something like carbon, we can add a helium and you get oxygen, then you can keep adding heliums to this and that will make you things like magnesium, which is really common, sulphur, and this carries on all the way up to iron. Once you've got up to iron, then adding more things to it stops making you energy. So as soon as really, really massive stars manage to build all the way up to iron, they can't keep producing energy. So at the end of their lives, these really, really massive stars explode as an enormous explosion known as supernovae. The entire star explodes, produces a massive amount of energy. One single supernova can outshine all the other stars in a galaxy for a few weeks. When these explode, they throw out all these elements that they've made and also make other things. All the stuff from stars like the sun, the carbon, the oxygen, and the nitrogen that they make, plus all these exploding stars, and there's other energetic events that can happen, merging neutron stars and gamma ray bursts and incredibly energetic events. In each of these, they make these heavy elements. So when we look at all the things that make up life on Earth and what make us up, you've got carbon, oxygen and nitrogen. Some of that's made in these supernovae. A lot of it is made in stars like the Sun when they die. And then there's all the other things like calcium in our bones, iron in our blood. All of that comes from these much more massive, much more energetic supernovae explosions. So everything that we're made of has been made inside stars, from stars like the Sun to supermassive stars that explode at the end of their lives. So when Carl Sagan said that we are made of star stuff, he was absolutely right. The hydrogen in us comes from the Big Bang, but absolutely everything else that makes us up comes from stars.